Well, we know that a Facebook whistleblower has revealed leaked documents about the tech giant's internal processes deemed the Facebook papers. Let's go over now to Dr. Karen Sutherland from the University of the Sunshine Coast. Good morning, Karen. Lovely to see you. Now, we know the documents revealed information about the January 6 Capitol riots. What else was revealed here? This is quite detrimental of Facebook at the moment. Absolutely. The hits just keep coming from these documents. So. Uh, another, a few other things, I mean, overall, uh, Facebook's been accused of always putting growth over safety. So that's been the, the main accusation, uh, saying that, I guess, people with, or users with large accounts and large followings, allowing them, they had sort of pr special privileges and they were allowed to share misinformation. They didn't really um, crack down on those sorts of people. Also, um, Things like uh, there was accusations that the, the, the platform was being used for uh, human trafficking, so much so that Apple was going to actually remove it from the uh, Apple Store uh, because of this. Uh, Facebook has denied this, but you know this, this is the, the conversation that's going out. Also, uh, just saying there, there weren't enough sort of language support uh, in different countries in the world. And so people were using the platform for all sorts of things, uh, hate speech and, and, and possibly even um, organised crime through the platform because there weren't enough uh, people in, in, on the ground um, who could actually translate what was going on. So, yeah, it's really exactly. amazing. And we know as well, uh, relating back to the January 6th Capitol riots, that's one of the most significant things of all time last year. Um, so yeah. if they were in any way facilitating that form of hate speech and uh, during such a critical time, uh, would be quite, uh, quite significant there. Now, as a consumer, does this just show us that we're relying on whistleblowers, courageous whistleblowers, to actually step up and share this dodgy information? What else is going on that we might not know? Oh, that's the thing. Who who knows? And and what's really interesting too. So Facebook has a uh, has a program for researchers, but it is it can be very difficult to actually get uh, a, a grant through Facebook. And with other platforms, say Twitter, it's quite easy to scrape data from Twitter. And I know with Facebook they're quite guarded because of you know user privacy and that sort of thing. But then they don't allow sort of researchers a lot of access to actually research what's going on either. So. Yeah, so I think a bit more transparency, I think, on Facebook's part would actually really help them. Or maybe not. <laughs> oh, I mean, going? we talk about it every single week, don't we? There seems to be just new developments in this Facebook saga at the moment. We know, though, yeah. as well, on the flip side of this, they are looking at rebranding. I think it's meant to happen in a matter of hours. Is that yeah, even going so, to help uh, them? I don't know. I think I think it's more to reflect because I mean they have grown considerably. So I mean they started just with Facebook, and so that name was that was relevant. But now they they have a number of different applications, and they want to be known more as like a, a metaverse because they 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 and they're also going into you know the um uh, sort of VR space and and this sort of thing as well. So I think they want a name that reflects more what they are. But yeah, I'm not sure if it will uh, make people forget who they are. <laughs> Interesting to see what they choose there. Now, lastly, before we wrap things up, we know consumers drive social media trends and it's forever changing. What trends do you foresee in 2022? Yeah, well, the amazing report just came out last week. So it was from Talkwalker and, and HubSpot. They do a report every year on the trends um, with 70 um, industry experts. And so I actually got to quote in this one. And um, I, I uh, foresee that um, there's going to be more sort of TikTok-esque content added to different platforms. So I know Facebook is adding, is, is also trialing Reels right now um, and they've added it to Instagram. So I think other platforms will follow suit. And I think um, the functionality of, of shopping through social is going to become even more enhanced and user-friendly. And yeah, and I, I think they're, they're the, the key ones. And also these audio spaces, remember early in the year, we we're all talking about Clubhouse and then all these platforms scramble to have these audio spaces. So it'll be interesting to see how this pans out as well. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, you know how we sort of talk about, just going back to Facebook there, we do talk about how um, they are rebranding and maybe moving into the metaverse. I just wanted to ask your thoughts on this as well. Why are they expanding into the metaverse when all of their other traditional and original processes seem to be crumbling beneath them. Yeah, I mean, may, I mean, who, who knows, maybe they, they're trying to sort of go into a, a different direction and, and will put their, their energies there and just try and forget what's going on. It's going, the next few years are going to be very, very interesting just to see 
what uh, Facebook or whatever they will be called, what their, their next moves are. So, yeah, watch this space, definitely. Karen Sutherland, lovely to see you. Thanks so much. Thanks. See you next week.